Dr. Joe Dispenza claims you can manifest anything in just one minute using neuroscience. His one minute to manifestation technique promises to rewire your brain and make even the impossible happen through a simple daily practice. Now, before we dive in, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I know your time is valuable and I appreciate you spending it here with me. I also want to be clear I'm not here to attack Dr. Joe Dispenza or dismiss his work entirely. He's helped many people and some of his techniques do have scientific backing. I'm simply here to separate what the research actually shows from what's marketing hype, so you can make informed decisions about these practices. Today I'm breaking down exactly what this technique does to your brain, examining the science behind his claims and showing you what you can actually expect from this practice. Let's dive right in. Let me walk you through exactly what Dispenza wants you to do in that one minute, because understanding the specific steps is crucial to analyzing whether this actually works. The technique starts with what he calls the sacred breath, the first 15 seconds of your practice. You close your eyes and take three deep intentional breaths. As you inhale, you're supposed to imagine golden light entering through the top of your head, filling every cell in your body with energy. As you exhale, you consciously release everything that's been holding you back, all your doubts, fears, and limiting beliefs. Dispenza claims this breathing pattern does something remarkable to your nervous system. He says it activates your parasympathetic nervous system, what scientists call the rest and digest state and shifts your brain waves from beta, your normal busy thinking state, to alpha, the state where manifestation supposedly becomes possible. Then comes what he calls the quantum moment, the next 30 seconds, which he considers the most powerful part of the entire practice. This is where everything supposedly changes. Instead of just thinking about what you want, you're going to feel it with every fiber of your being. If you're manifesting health, he wants you to feel vibrant energy coursing through your veins. Feel your body strong and resilient, full of vitality. If it's abundance you're seeking, feel that deep sense of security and freedom that comes with financial success. Feel the joy of being able to help others. The peace of mind that comes with never having to worry about money again. The key here, according to Dispenza, is emotional intensity. Your emotions are supposedly the fuel that powers this entire process. You don't just casually think about what you want. You feel it so deeply that it's as if it's already happened. Your heart should be swelling with gratitude, your entire being vibrating with joy. He emphasizes this isn't pretending. This is creating a new reality in what he calls the quantum field. The final 15 seconds are about integration. You hold that feeling while maintaining gratitude, letting your entire being vibrate with joy, as if your manifestation is already complete. You're essentially sealing the experience, locking in that emotional state. Dispenza insists this practice is most effective first thing in the morning when your brain is still in a theta state a highly receptive state where you can supposedly program your subconscious mind more easily. It's like having direct access to your brain's control panel. He also emphasizes that consistency is absolutely crucial. One minute practiced with pure intention every single day is supposedly more powerful than hours of sporadic effort. But it doesn't end with the practice itself. After your one minute session, you're supposed to pay attention to signs and synchronicities throughout your day. When opportunities present themselves, no matter how small, you take action. This is supposedly the universe responding to your new energy, and every coincidence is feedback that you're on the right track. When we look at what's actually happening in your brain during this practice, we find a mix of legitimate science and unsupported speculation Starting with what's backed by real research, the breathing component does activate your parasympathetic nervous system. This isn't mystical. It's well-documented physiology. 
Controlled deep breathing genuinely reduces cortisol levels, lowers your heart rate, and activates your body's rest and digest response. Studies from Harvard Medical School and other institutions have confirmed this repeatedly. So when Dispenza talks about shifting your nervous system state, he's describing a real, measurable physiological change. The claim about brainwave shifts also has scientific basis. Meditation and focused attention practices can indeed shift brainwaves from beta states, those rapid analytical thought patterns of normal consciousness, to alpha states, which are associated with relaxed awareness and creative thinking. EEG studies consistently show this pattern. Experienced meditators can even reach theta states, which are linked to deep meditation and heightened receptivity. Where Dr. Dispenza really gets the science right is with neuroplasticity. This is perhaps the most exciting area of neuroscience research in recent decades. Sarah Lazar's groundbreaking research at Harvard showed that just eight weeks of mindfulness meditation increases gray matter density in areas of the brain associated with attention, emotional regulation, and self-awareness. Even more remarkably, it physically shrinks the amygdala, your brain's alarm system responsible for fear and stress responses. So yes, meditation practices can literally change your brain structure. The visualization component connects to legitimate research in sports psychology. Mental rehearsal has been used by elite athletes for decades, and the science is solid. Studies show that athletes who combine visualization with physical practice improve performance significantly better than those who only train physically. The brain activates similar neural pathways whether you're actually performing an action or vividly imagining it. However, this is where we need to be careful about interpretation. The assertion that your brain can't tell the difference between vivid imagination and reality is oversimplified and misleading. While your brain does activate overlapping neural networks when imagining versus experiencing something, it doesn't mean your brain thinks imagination is reality. You're not creating false memories or confusing mental rehearsal with actual experience. The coherent brain state language that Dispenza uses isn't standard neuroscience terminology. While meditation can create more synchronized brain activity, what researchers call neural coherence, describing this as a broadcasting station sending signals to the universe goes far beyond what the research actually demonstrates. This brings us to the most problematic aspect of Dispenza's teaching. His constant references to quantum mechanics and what he calls the quantum field. Again, this isn't about discrediting Dispenza personally. Many respected figures in the self-help space make similar quantum claims. I just want you to have the facts so you can make informed decisions about what to believe and what to be skeptical about. This is where legitimate neuroscience ends and pseudoscience begins. Dispenza claims you're affecting the quantum field around you and changing the very fabric of reality through your thoughts and emotions. He suggests that when you reach this coherent state, you're sending out electromagnetic signals that interact with the world around you, literally reshaping reality at a quantum level. This is what physicists call quantum mysticism, taking legitimate quantum concepts and misapplying them to consciousness and manifestation. The problem is that quantum effects happen at subatomic scales under very specific conditions. We're talking about individual particles in controlled laboratory environments, usually requiring extreme cold and isolation from external interference. Your brain, while remarkable, is a warm, chaotic biological system. It's not a quantum computer operating in isolation, the quantum field isn't something you can consciously influence through meditation any more than you can influence the weather by thinking really hard about sunshine. Yes, your brain produces electromagnetic fields. That's exactly how EEG machines work. But these fields are incredibly weak, barely detectable beyond your skull with sensitive equipment. 
The idea that these weak electromagnetic signals are broadcasting into the universe and reshaping reality has no scientific foundation whatsoever. Real quantum physicists like Sean Carroll from Caltech have repeatedly debunked these interpretations. Quantum mechanics doesn't work the way it's portrayed in manifestation content. The uncertainty principle, quantum entanglement, and wave function collapse don't apply to consciousness manifesting reality in your daily life. Despite the questionable quantum claims, this practice can produce real, measurable benefits, just not the ones being promised. Stress reduction is the most documented and reliable effect. The breathing exercises and meditation components will genuinely lower your stress hormones and activate relaxation responses. This alone can have significant positive impacts on your health, sleep quality, and overall well-being. Improved focus and attention are well-established benefits of regular meditation practice. The mindfulness aspects of this technique strengthen your ability to concentrate and maintain attention, skills that transfer to other areas of your life. Increased motivation and self-efficacy often result from positive visualization practices. When you regularly imagine success and positive outcomes, you tend to feel more confident and motivated to take action toward your goals. This isn't mystical, it's basic psychology. The placebo effect plays a significant role here, especially for subjective experiences like mood, energy levels, and pain perception. If you genuinely believe the practice will help you feel better, it probably will, at least partially. The placebo effect is a real, measurable phenomenon that can produce genuine improvements in how you feel. But here's what's really happening when people think this technique is working to manifest external circumstances. The frequency illusion, also known as the bader meinhof phenomenon, makes you notice things you're already focused on. When you spend time every morning thinking intensely about specific goals, you naturally become more aware of relevant opportunities that were always present in your environment. You're not manifesting them, you're just noticing them for the first time. Confirmation bias reinforces this effect. When something good happens after practicing the technique, you attribute it directly to the manifestation practice. When nothing happens, you explain it away. Maybe you weren't focused enough or the universe has different timing or you need to practice longer. You remember the hits and forget the misses. Perhaps most importantly, the increased confidence and positive mood that can result from this practice may lead you to take more risks, engage more positively with others, and pursue opportunities more actively. These behavioral changes can absolutely create better outcomes in your life, but they work through conventional psychological and social mechanisms, not quantum field manipulation. The one-minute manifestation technique combines several legitimate practices, controlled breathing, meditation, and positive visualization, with unsubstantiated claims about quantum fields and reality manipulation. If Dispenza's approach resonates with you and you find value in it, that's completely valid. My goal isn't to stop you from trying it. It's to help you understand what's really happening so you can have realistic expectations and get the most benefit from your practice. What you can realistically expect from consistent practice. Reduced stress levels, improved ability to focus, increased motivation toward your goals and potentially better mood and confidence. These are valuable benefits that can genuinely improve your quality of life and help you pursue your goals more effectively. What you shouldn't expect. The ability to manifest external circumstances through thought alone. Influence electromagnetic fields beyond your body or manipulate quantum reality through meditation. The real power of these practices lies not in magical thinking, but in their ability to change your internal state. Your stress levels, focus, motivation, and confidence, which can then influence how you behave and interact with the world around you. That's not magic, but it's genuinely powerful. Understanding what's actually happening helps you use these tools more effectively, 
while maintaining realistic expectations. You don't need quantum mysticism to benefit from meditation and visualization. The actual neuroscience and psychology are fascinating and powerful enough on their own. Thank you so much for watching this breakdown with me. I hope this information helps you make more informed decisions about manifestation practices. If you found this analysis helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could like this video and subscribe for more science-based breakdowns of popular self-help techniques. What's your experience with manifestation practices? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts.